Chan Kong Sang was born on April 7, 1954. Before becoming known as Jackie, he used many aliases. When he was born, his weight was about 5.5 kilograms. That's why his mother called him Pow Pow, Cannonball. His parents, Charles and Lily Chan, worked as a cook and maid at the residence of the French consul in Hong Kong. They lived in poverty and had virtually no money. After the birth of their son, being in complete despair, for some time they even thought about selling their child. Chan grew up as a very active child, a noisy fidget, and developed his personality already in childhood, which often got him into trouble. His father tried to direct his energy in the right way, and from the age of four, he began to inculcate a love of sports in him. At first, things didn't go as planned, and Chan, instead of calming down, became too self-confident. In his first year of elementary school, which is called Nahua Primary School, he was expelled for bad behavior and unwillingness to study. As a result, his father sent him to the Peking Opera School at the Chinese Institute of Opera Research, which predetermined Jackie's future fate. In Hong Kong, just a uh, long time ago, just a China evolution going on. And there's so many people escaped from China to, to Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So in our school, it's the morning we, we're learning singing, like, ah, oh, then afternoon punch, then kicking. <laughs> they come to, to our school. How old are you at this point? Se uh, seven, seven? Seven? Seven. In this school, the kids learned to sing, dance, studied acting, philosophy, and martial arts, in particular, kung fu. The discipline in this educational institution was serious. Classes lasted for 14 to 16 hours. Upon admission, the administration asked parents to accept one agreement. This document stated that parents took full responsibility for everything that happened within the walls of the educational institution. In the most extreme case, corporal punishment might be fatal for a child. Almost then, in 1960, his parents moved to live in Australia. Probably at that moment, Jackie's childhood ended. In the morning, with the cup full of tea, uh, water, we run like this. You cannot spill the water. You spill the water and hit you. <laughs> and we're just, just walking like this. And uh, 1,000 punch and 500 kick. Wow, and, and singing training. And singing, uh, summer, <laughs> singing, somersault. I mean, you're, 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 you're literally a triple threat. But Jackie accepted this form of education better than those from a regular school. His character features that influenced the expulsion from the last place of study were revealed here as they should. His energy, charisma, and most importantly, perseverance, the ability to rise again and again after a fall played a big role. Peking opera as an art form requires an actor's knowledge of vocals, pantomime, dance, as well as acrobatics. Performers of different roles dress in frilly clothes and put colorful makeup on their faces. Such versatile training gave Jackie Chan good acting preparation and the ability to treat himself with humor. Master Yu noticed the boy and he quickly became his best student. They hardly taught Jackie to read and write. That's why he still writes poorly in Chinese. Master Yu spent a lot of time with students and formed a mini troupe that staged performances for tourists and even began to earn money. They were called the Seven Lucky Ones. In the future, they became famous actors and directors. Some became famous only at the level of Hong Kong, but one of them became known all over the world. And the master himself instilled in Jackie a love for the stage and became his second father. As a child, Chan began acting in episodic roles in films. At the age of 8 through 10, he starred in the extras of the classic film in the Huang Mei opera genre, Eternal Love, in Big and Little Wong Tin Bar, as the son of the main character performed by Li Li Hua, and the Peking opera, The Story of King Xiongliang. His role models were Charles Chaplin, Buster Keaton, and Harold Lloyd. All of them were much more important to the actor in childhood than any martial arts star, whose label he was actually forced to wear at a young age. Later, Jackie and two other classmates formed a trio, Three Dragons. Together they went to reach Hollywood and together they appeared in different films as actors, stuntmen, or even action and stunt directors. As soon as Jackie turned 17, the contract signed by his parents came to an end, and he set off on the free voyage of adulthood. 
having first visited his family in Australia. There, next to his parents, Jackie took on any job that could bring at least some money. He washed dishes, helped everyone who asked him about it, worked at a construction site, and performed other ancillary work. They say that it was in Australia that the actor received the name Jackie. That's what his colleagues at a construction site in Canberra called him because they couldn't pronounce his real name. In the early 1970s, Chan began to appear in minor roles, albeit on the set with then-rising martial arts superstar Bruce Lee, 1972's Fist of Fury and 1973's Enter the Dragon. During those years, Chan and Lee often crossed paths, usually as an actor and a stunt coordinator. Shortly after Lee's untimely death, Chan was frequently cast in films capitalizing on Bruce Lee's success, using words such as fist, fury, or dragon in American release titles. The turning point in the fate of Jackie Chan occurred in 1976, when he was offered the lead role in the famous Hong Kong director Lo Wei's action movie New Fists of Fury, a sequel to the original 1972 film. The New Fists of Fury was Jackie Chan's first film to be credited under the Chinese name Jing Long, which roughly means successful dragon. Jackie owed his further achievements in Hong Kong primarily to the smart and enterprising Willie Chan, who became Jackie's constant personal manager and reliable friend, and remained so for more than 30 years. Willie was instrumental in launching Chan's international career, beginning with his early forays into the American film industry in the 1980s. This was followed by other films with the participation of Jackie Chan, and Willie saw a pattern. The more freedom of action was given to this actor, the more successful the picture was. What are you doing? Just hang on, man. I'll be right back. Cut it! I was just playing. Jackie's first Hollywood film was The Big Brawl in 1980. Jackie Chan received $1 million for his role in this film and immediately became the highest paid Asian actor in American cinema at the time. He remains one to this day. Chan's own film career was in full swing and he appeared in many low-budget martial arts films that were quickly released by Hong Kong studios eager to cater to the martial arts picture boom of the early 1970s. He starred in Shaolin Wooden Men, To Kill with Intrigue, Half a Loaf of Kung Fu, and Magnificent Bodyguards, which was the first film in the history of Hong Kong filmed in 3D. All of them were met well in cinemas. However, Chan had a particularly big breakthrough with the 1978 hit Drunken Master, which became iconic among fans of martial arts movies. <sighs> It's important to note that it was the legendary director and choreographer Yun Wu Ping who directed The Snake and the Eagle's Shadow and Drunken Master who developed a new stage image of a good-natured and smiling lazy guy for Chan. This is how the revolutionary comedy Kung Fu was born, in which humor became an organic part of the brawls. Thanks to the box office success of these films, Jackie got the opportunity to be himself, and then Chinese directors imitated him instead. Jackie Chan's character in The Drunken Master, Wang Fei Hung, is a real figure in Chinese history and the founder of one of the most famous wushu styles called Hung Ga. Already at the age of 13, Fei Hung was considered an excellent fighter, and when he joined the army during the Xinghai Revolution, he became famous throughout China as the Robin Hood of the 20th century. His life story has been featured in hundreds of films, books, and television shows. Drunken Master popularized the Drunken Fist style, firmly introducing it into popular culture. The adept at this technique gains strength as he drinks alcohol to the conditioning stage, while the spontaneity of the wobbly movements disorients enemies. However, Jackie himself didn't drink alcohol. Before filming, he stood upside down for several minutes so that the rush of blood would make his face red. Jackie almost lost an eye on the set of this picture. Performing a trick, he unsuccessfully fell off the table and severely injured his eye. The actor was taken to the hospital to get stitches, but Jackie was against needles, so the doctors used electricity. When the eye healed, it turned out to be wider than the other, and then the doctor advised him to do cosmetic surgery. The Drunken Master grossed two and a half times as much as Chan's previous film, Snake in the Eagle's Shadow, which was already considered a success. In 30 days of theatrical release in Hong Kong, the film grossed just over 6.7 million Hong Kong dollars. This made it the second highest grossing film in Hong Kong in 1978. 
The film was a huge boost in Jackie Chan's career, and he got big hopes that he would become a popular actor. Jackie Chan fans still rewatch The Drunken Master with pleasure. However, Jackie Chan didn't just want to act in films, he also planned to make movies on his own. Making a film is not cheap, and therefore, over the past five years, the guy accepted almost every offer of secondary roles, worked as a stuntman, wrote and performed songs for the titles. One of the fundamentals in his career was the 1979 movie The Fearless Hyena. It was the film for which Jackie has been accumulating the necessary amount over the years. He independently wrote the script, was the director of scenes and stunts, played the main role, sang in the opening and closing credits, and worked as a director. Chan's directorial debut was highly successful. The film paid off at the Chinese box office. Soon, in the early 1980s, Chan again became a film director and screenwriter with The Young Master. And then producer of Enter the Dragon, Robert Klaus, lured Jackie to the U.S. to shoot Battle Creek Brawl, also known as The Big Brawl. The film was supposed to make our hero profitable in the American market. However, the actor was dissatisfied with the final result, just like the American audience. In a further attempt to rise to fame in the U.S., Jackie was cast alongside Burt Reynolds in Hal Needman's 1981 film The Cannonball Run, about car chases. The plot is based on real races held in the United States from 1971 to 1979. Jackie was cast as a Japanese racing driver. Unfortunately, his martial arts skills were only shown in one shortcut towards the end of the movie. Chan was very impressed by the unfortunate doubles inserted in the end credits of the film, which inspired him to use this technique in his future projects. In the same 1980s, Jackie began to actively develop his second passion. The actor was also a talented singer. As a performer, he gained popularity in Hong Kong and the Asian region. Since 1984, Jackie has released 20 albums of compositions in Cantonese, Mandarin, and Taiwanese, as well as in Japanese and English. He often performs songs for his films himself, but when the films were released in Europe and the USA, these compositions were usually replaced. While things weren't going well with Hollywood, Jackie decided to return to the East to do what he did best, shoot amazing action films full of spectacular stunts. Chan and his legendary stunt team were unmatched in their ability to pull off the most incredible action scenes. Over the next decade, some of the best work came out with their participation. Chan, along with the dynamic Sammo Hung and Yuan Bao, starred in Winners and Sinners, Project A, Wheels O' Meals, My Lucky Stars, and My Lucky Stars 2. When Bruce Lee died in 1973, it became a great loss for Hong Kong cinema. Already at an elderly age, Jackie complained. He wanted to be like Chaplin or Buster Keaton, but all the directors with whom he worked wanted him to copy Bruce Lee. The rebellious actor honestly rewatched films with an icon of martial arts, but did everything in a fundamentally opposite way. Jackie made a cheerful face where Bruce kept a deathly seriousness. Ah, <sighs> Project A, released in 1983, is considered the ancestor of the action comedy. The film's action scenes make extensive use of stunts, improvised objects, and other elements of the old movies that inspired Chan since childhood. Up to this point, Hong Kong films had not used such large sets, nor had they paid as much attention to historical detail as this film did. Moreover, it was the first film with a mixed variety of action scenes and not just martial arts. Prior to filming, Jackie Chan and his stunt team trained with real NCIS to give the action a sense of authenticity. It took Chan a week to work up the courage to film the clock tower fall scene inspired by the movie Safety Last. Jackie was afraid to voluntarily fall and held onto the clock until he literally lost his grip and fell. Chan performed this stunt scene three times, two takes shown during the course of the film and a third in bad shots during the credits.
The title Project A was originally a working one, and they wanted to call the picture Pirate Patrol. But they feared that after the other Hong Kong film producers would rush to copy and release films with pirates. The 1984 Wheels on Meals is another no less iconic and significant film in Jackie's career. The movie was filmed in Barcelona and the Gaudet Cathedral appears in the credits. That's because the scene of the butler's confession about the origin of Sylvia takes place on one of its upper platforms. However, the main thing for which this film became a cult were great fights, for which the film was nominated as Best Production of Action Scenes at the Hong Kong Film Awards. In the final duel between Jackie Chan and Benny Urquidas, Benny kicked so sharply that several candles which were placed nearby were blown out by the breeze caused by this kick. This episode was included in the film. Benny Urquidas was hitting for real, hitting contact which discouraged Jackie. This is due to the fact that Urquidas had a habit of performing in the ring, but little experience in filming a movie. There have been many rumors about what happened during the filming of the big fight scene with Jackie Chan and Benny Urquidas, ranging from speculations that the two actors didn't get along to the rumor that the filmmakers threatened Urquidas to fire him for hitting Jackie too hard. However, the actors respected each other and hugged tightly at the end of the filming. <laughs> In English-speaking countries, the film was released under the name Wheels on Meals, and it could be more correct to call it Meals on Wheels. This was due to the fact that the management of the film company Golden Harvest was afraid to release another film beginning with the letter M, after the previous films of the company, Megaforce and Menage a Trois, which completely failed at the box office. During the scene infiltrating the main character's palace, they mentioned James Bond and then Project A, the previous project of the actors. Food Truck became Hong Kong's highest grossing film of that year, grossing 21 million Hong Kong dollars. Later, based on the film, the computer arcade game Kung Fu Master was released. In 1982, Chan found time for his personal life. He married Taiwanese actress Joan Lin and had a son, J.C. Chan, that same year. He would also devote his career to singing and acting. According to the media and actress Elaine Ng, Jackie Chan also has an illegitimate daughter, Etta Wu Jolin, who was born in 1999. The Hong Kong media claimed that he was the father, but neither side has confirmed this so far. Her mother, Elaine Ng, announced that she has decided to raise her daughter alone without the help of Jackie. By the beginning of the 80s, Jackie was already a real star in China, but he still couldn't reach a breakthrough at the American box office. Nevertheless, he didn't give up hope of gaining his foothold in the U.S. film market. Together with Danny Aiello in 1985, he starred in The Protector. As it was previously, Jackie felt that the American director, James Glickenhaus, failed to grasp the appeal of his audience. The film received lukewarm reviews and box office receipts. Despite fairly large publicity, The Protector failed at the American box office. The Protector was the second film by Jackie where the actor used firearms. The first film was Winners and Sinners, although Jackie tried to shoot firearms even earlier in the film Dragon Lord, in the scene where Dragon and Cowboy pick up a musket and accidentally shoot at the ceiling. Jackie decided to slightly change his image on the silver screen, and his next film, Police Story, was a clear departure from the previously light-hearted martial arts. His fans loved it. Interestingly, in 1985 alone, Jackie Chan played a police officer in as many as five films. Ironically, Chan said that if he hadn't become an actor, he would have probably become a police officer. Over the years, Jackie had already suffered a lot in fights and his own stunts. He was no stranger to getting hit, in pain, and continuing to shoot with possible injuries. He went through this more than once during his studies. On the account, there were already fractures of the ribs, fingers, sprains and dislocations, cuts and bruises. But one incident that occurred in 1986 almost cost the actor his life. On the set of Armor of God, Jackie made a jump from the wall of the castle to a tree, but could not resist and fell on a stone, breaking his head. He got trauma to the base of the skull with cerebral hemorrhages. Wait, how, how far did you fall? I like uh, 25 feet. 25 yeah. feet? So you had, to, you had time to like read on the way down. You That's know, a pretty long fall. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just tried to <laughs> grab all the tree. Just, just keep You're breaking. like Wiley Coyote. You're trying to run up the tree. Hey, if the cameraman can push me, I'm safe. But the mm -hmm. cameraman just pick up the camera, they run away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, I just fall. They in my ran head. away? Yeah. 
Oh my God! Okay. Then all the blood just from my ear. Oh, then I ran, oh that's terrible. Went to the hospital. Oh my God! Big operation. But you're fine now. You're in great health. Yeah. You're doing all that stuff. As a result, his right ear can't hear as well as his left one, but that's nothing compared to the price Jackie could pay. This is the most serious injury in his entire career. However, even after this, Chan didn't give up his favorite pastime, acting, stunts, and martial arts. Jackie often said in interviews that he would like to have more money to do charity work. And these are not just nice words. In 1988, the actor founded the Jackie Chan Charitable Foundation to offer scholarships and active assistance to the youth of Hong Kong, as well as to help victims of natural disasters or diseases. His biggest regret in life is that he didn't get a proper education. This inspires him to fund educational institutions around the world. Soon, he was back in front of the cameras. Project A2 was released mainly due to the fact that the first part was really liked by the Emperor of Japan. And in Police Story 2, released a year later, Jackie again suffered numerous injuries, including a burnt face while escaping from a burning factory. The final explosion of the factory, filled with explosives, was the largest explosion in the history of Hong Kong cinema at that time. The real building burst up. Especially for this, Jackie invited specialists in pyrotechnics from America, and the musical accompaniment of the film was taken from the armor of God. The most striking films of the following years can be considered Miracles, Armor of God 2, and Police Story 3, for which Jackie Chan himself approves Stanley Tong to direct the film. The rope ladder stunt thrown from a helicopter in the Police Story 3 was performed at a height of 300 meters, and Chan was hit by a helicopter. The films proved to be a significant success for Jackie. They elevated his status to unprecedented heights in Asia and were quite prominent among his devoted fans around the world. It is ironic that fame at home at one time did Jackie more harm than good. The fact is that at the turn of the 80s and 90s, the Chinese entertainment industry was kept in an iron fist by triads. Jackie went against the system by refusing to do business with them. However, the invitations became so persistent that one day Chan was forced to buy a gun and stop leaving the house without a weapon, from time to time even taking a grenade with him. The actor said that once 20 armed gang members surrounded him at dinner. and solved the problem radically. He spent half a million dollars to hire tough guys from the mainland to protect himself and the artists who worked with him under the contract. Eventually, the triad lost much of its influence in the Chinese entertainment industry, and Jackie Chan is still considered a hero in certain circles. Success in the U.S. was just around the corner for the hard-working actor, and it came in the form of the action movie Rumble in the Bronx, a project that opened the doors of Hollywood to the actor and introduced him to the whole world far beyond China. Rumble in the Bronx is a 1995 action comedy and Jackie's first movie to hit the U.S. box office. Just don't be surprised that the role of the Bronx in New York is actually played by Vancouver in the film. The producers wanted to call the film Rumble in Vancouver, but the American distributors decided that Rumble in the Bronx was a better title, so they changed it. However, anyone who is familiar with the geography of Vancouver or New York can easily understand where the film was shot. The sights of the Canadian city often flash on the screen. Jackie did several deadly stunts in the film and was filmed mostly with an injured leg. One episode required jumping from a bridge onto a hovercraft. The actor landed badly, injuring the bones on his thigh, lower leg, ankle joint, and received a fracture of his left ankle and an open fracture of the toes. But this didn't stop him and he continued to act with a broken leg. And in some places, this is noticeable. For example, in the scene of escaping from the bandits, it is clearly visible that Jackie is limping. He had to wear a sock painted to look like sneakers over the cast. Adding to the difficulty was the region where the film was filmed. The shop fight scene took 20 days to complete as Chan trained local stuntmen to fight Hong Kong style. Jackie was afraid that the picture would not be accepted in the USA. This was the case with other American films, The Big Brawl and The Protector, and agreed to the proposal of New Line Cinema to make a number of changes in the timing. They cut out scenes that slowed down the dynamics and pace of the film and also changed the personnel sequence. Because of this, the American version is 91 minutes long, 15 minutes shorter than the Hong Kong version. Jackie Chan didn't waste time and set to work on the film's Police Story 4, First Strike, Mr. Nice Guy, and Who Am I? 
In the third one, during editing, the scene where Jackie's hero rides on a rhinoceros had to be removed, as the operator made a mistake. Unfortunately, it was not possible to reshoot this scene, which upset Jackie very much, since during the filming of this scene, he broke a rib when falling from a rhinoceros to the ground. But there are still enough highlights in the film, such as the legendary slide jump on a 23-story building in Rotterdam, which Jackie dedicated to his teacher, Master Yu. All of these films had positive results at the international box office, and Jackie set to work on his biggest and biggest budget American film, 1998's Rush Hour. In this project, Jackie worked with talkative comedian Chris Tucker. Who are you? You. No, not me, you. Yes, I am you. Just answer the damn questions. Who are you? I have told you. Yes, and Jackie Chan himself spoke English for the first time in American cinema, since before that, he always preferred dubbing. The actor was very doubtful of his ability to speak a foreign language. The director persuaded him to abandon dubbing as this would give authenticity to his character. My daddy want to call a bullet by his bare hand. No bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you believe your father wasting his life dead dive in Delta? <laughs> <laughs> they must not could have You're right, man. Let's go tell him. The film was even more successful than Rumble in the Bronx and firmly established Jackie as a real star in the United States. Surprisingly, the actor himself spoke negatively about the film. Director Brett Ratner was a big fan of Jackie Chan's Hong Kong films. He felt that American audiences would not be familiar with jokes from Jackie's other films and intentionally reused some of them. For example, the scene where Inspector Lee accidentally grabbed Johnson, Elizabeth Pena, by the chest is a reference to Jackie Chan's Mr. Nice Guy. Jackie Chan said that the scene where his character meets Chris Tucker's character for the first time was very similar to the actor's first meeting in real life at the agency's office. First time I met him in William Morris' office, and he just keep talking. I just look at that guy, why? Why he keep talking? <laughs> and I, you know, and he's so fast. And Chris Tucker, how take I don't have I just, ah, I just, huh, uh, ah, mm, ha, 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 ha. Then after he left, he said, ha, 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 ha. After left, then I asked my man, what the hell are you talking about? Tucker spoke so fast that after the meeting ended, Chan told his manager, I don't understand a single word coming out of his mouth. This phrase is used in the film. Here's an interesting fact. Rush Hour inspired the creation of the Rotten Tomatoes website. Site founder Sen Duong is a big fan of Jackie Chan and has set up a website to collect reviews of all of Chan's films in Hong Kong that have been released in the United States. He wrote the website in two weeks and posted it shortly before the release of this movie. Rotten Tomatoes is currently one of the best-known sources of movie reviews, and its tomato meter rating is used to gauge a movie's success and in advertising and awards. Jackie then teamed up with rising star Owen Wilson to star in the 2000 film Shanghai Noon and its 2003 sequel Shanghai Nights. There are many references to westerns or the names of western actors in the film. The hero of Jackie Chan, Chan Wang, in America is named John Wayne, in honor of the king of westerns, John Wayne. Royal Bannon at the end of the film said that his real name was Wyatt Earp in honor of the famous guardian of law and the hero of westerns who lived in the late 19 and early 20th centuries. One of the members of Roy's gang is called Wallach, in honor of the actor Eli Wallach, who played the role of the leader of the gang in the film The Magnificent Seven. The title of Shanghai Noon is a reference to the famous movie High Noon, and the plot of the film itself refers to another western of 1971, Red Sun. Brandon Merrill, who played Jackie Chan's hero's horse-riding wife, is a true rodeo champion. At the moment, this is her only film role. The fight scene with the horseshoe was almost impossible to do with a fake horseshoe, as it was too light. However, Jackie Chan refused to hit any of the stuntmen with a real horseshoe, saying it was too dangerous. I just do that? Not bad. I don't know karate, but I know crazy, and I will use it. And this catchy phrase is actually borrowed from a song by James Brown. In addition, the song played during the fight scene at the bar, La Grange, by ZZ Top. <laughs> Becky Chan and Owen Wilson played together again in the sequel to the film Shanghai Nights, and after that in Around the World in 80 Days. 
the creators of Shanghai Nights once again resorted to small Easter eggs. There are several references to Sherlock Holmes in this film. One of them is that the bad guy is called Lord Rathbone. Basil Rathbone was one of the first actors to play Sherlock Holmes in the movies. Rathbone is referred to in the film as the best swordsman in England. Basil Rathbone was the star of many swashbuckling films and was considered the finest swordsman on the silver screen. In the scene where Jean Wan, Jackie's character, is fighting the Rathbone guards, they are constantly making sure that none of the priceless antique urns are broken. Jackie Chan did the same at the climax of Rush Hour. The film is also significant for the first battle between Jackie Chan and Donnie Yen. Both of them achieved great success in Hong Kong, but had never fought each other on screen before. In 2000, there was the premiere of the animated series which became truly iconic for a whole generation. Jackie Chan Adventures tells the story of an archaeologist who became a collective image of the characters played by Chan. Interestingly, the actor himself did not voice the main character, but he appeared at the end of each episode and answered questions about his life and work in a mini-interview format. In addition, he was one of the producers of the show. Many of the episodes of the animated series contain references to Chan's films and life. For example, in the episode A Night at the Opera, the uncle of the main character stated that he was part of the performance troupe Seven Little Fortunes. Jackie Chan was a part of that troupe in real life. Another example was in the episode The Invisible Mom. Jackie used the kung fu style drunken master there. As you already know, the style was used by Jackie in the movie of the same name. Some of the show's characters were also based on certain people. Uncle combined the characters of Jackie's father and his agent. Jade was inspired by his nieces, and Toro was based on one of his stunt team members as well as himself. In 2001, Jackie Chan teamed up again with Chris Tucker in Rush Hour 2. The film turned out to be a good continuation of the first part. All I did was invite them to have a drink. You invited them to get naked and sacrifice a small goat. The scene where Carter and Lee run naked down the street in Hong Kong was filmed in one take and there are no extras around them. They really had to do it because the production couldn't close the street for filming. Actor Don Cheadle, who played Kenny in the film, agreed to star only if he fought Jackie Chan and spoke Chinese. During the filming of the stunt where Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker jump from the top window of the Red Dragon Hotel and then slide over the Chinese lantern wires, there was an actual car chase that was not part of the film. Filming took place in Las Vegas, Nevada, and apparently a car full of drunk tourists got into an altercation with a taxi driver. The two cars began to chase, heading for the set and not noticing the crew members, extras, and a huge crane with a camera and crew. Fortunately, no one was hurt. The taxi driver and passengers were detained by the police. There was another story during filming that could have interfered with the film's release. The counterfeit dollar bills used in the film read, We Believe in Dogs. On one day of filming, some extras left the set with counterfeit money and they ended up in several Las Vegas casinos. The situation got so out of control that production on the film was briefly suspended while the FBI investigated the props department to determine if they had violated the Counterfeit Prevention Act of 1992. The film grossed $67 million on its opening weekend, an increase of $34 million from Rush Hour during the same time period. In 2002, the film community recognized Jackie Chan's services to cinema and the actor received his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. The star is located very close to the entrance to the Kodak Theater building where the Academy Awards are presented. A couple of years later, Jackie received another star, but it was already on the Hong Kong Walk of Stars. On April 28, 2004, it was open to the general public. Let's go back to 2002. The picture, The Tuxedo, where Chan played along with Jennifer Love Hewitt was released. The film received very mixed reviews. On Rotten Tomatoes, the film has a low rating of 22%, with an average score of 4.4 out of 10. The critics section stated, Chan is as charming as ever, but his talents are wasted by special effects and a bad script. On Metacritic, the film has a score of 30 out of 100, indicating mostly unfavorable reviews. However, fans of Jackie like the film, and many speak of it purely positively. The film Medallion in 2003 suffered an even greater failure. This one couldn't even recoup the money spent on its creation. It collected $34 million on a budget of 41. 
Many factors influenced this. Portions of the film had to be reshot when the studio discovered that the film's script borrowed large parts, including entire scenes and dialogue, from Mark Goldblatt's 1988 horror comedy Dead Heat. The additional scenes reshot in the last stage of production with Chan are very noticeable. Jackie wears the hair extensions he wore during the filming of Shanghai Nights. Interestingly, this was the first movie to use special effects in Jackie Chan's fights. Another fun fact, according to guides at Dublin Castle in Ireland, Jackie Chan jumped on the throne during filming. This made him the first person to sit on the throne since King George V. The next film, Around the World in 80 Days in 2004, became at that time the most expensive and most failed film with Jackie Chan at the box office, collecting $72 million on a budget of $110 million. In 2014, the Los Angeles Times listed the film as one of the most expensive box office flops of all time. Even more, he has two nominations for the Golden Raspberry. The first, Arnold Schwarzenegger for Worst Supporting Actor, and the second is Worst Prequel, Sequel, Remake, or Plagiarism. The film is based on the novel by Jules Verne, and Jackie himself played the role of Passepartout. Filming lasted six months, and this is the first time that Owen Wilson and Luke Wilson have played brothers on screen. Not forgetting his devoted fans, Jackie returned to traditional films in 2004's New Police Story and 2005's The Myth. At this point, Jackie Chan partly moved away from kung fu comedies and began to try out other genres, including romance, drama, and fantasy. In The New Police Story, he played a middle-aged alcoholic law enforcement officer who decided to take revenge on the villains for the death of his friends. In The Myth, he appeared as a legendary Chinese general who fell in love with a princess and archaeologist. Moreover, both heroes of Chan in the last film are fluent in kung fu. In 2008, several pictures with Jackie Chan were released at once. The actor starred with another equally popular Asian movie star, Jet Li, and Rob McKinnoff's The Forbidden Kingdom. True, the film itself didn't cause delight among critics and didn't bring the expected income, despite the presence of a duet of great masters. Chan then worked on animation, voicing a monkey in the Kung Fu Panda animated films. Interestingly, the chopstick fight scene between Po and Master Shifu in the cartoon is an homage to a similar scene in the 1980 film Fearless Master with Jackie Chan. According to Jackie, he recorded his voiceovers for the cartoon in three languages, including Mandarin and Cantonese, during one five-hour recording session in Los Angeles. Jackie Chan's signature jump, kick and scream, as Monkey, is similar to the animated intro in the 1990 USA series The Night Shadow Horror Kung Fu Theater. In 2009, Chan was appointed anti-drug envoy by the Chinese government, actively participating in anti-drug campaigns and supporting President Xi Jinping's statement that illegal drugs must be eradicated and their users severely punished. In 2014, when his own son, JC, was arrested for cannabis use, he said he was angry, shocked, heartbroken, and ashamed of his son. Chan later starred in the epic historical drama The Founding of a Republic, and in 2010, there were action-adventure films The Spy Next Door with Amber Valletta, Little Big Soldier with Wong Le Home, and The Karate Kid with the still young Jaden Smith. In 2011, the film Shaolin was released by Andy Lau. In 2012, the action comedy thriller Armor of God 3, Chinese Zodiac, was released. Jackie Chan not only played the title role, but also acted as a director, screenwriter, and producer of the movie. Then, as part of a press conference at the Cannes International Film Festival, Chan said that Chinese Zodiac was his last big action movie. Jackie is saddened by the cruelty of the modern world. According to him, he loves martial arts but hates cruelty. He may well play on the screen not only action heroes but also more serious roles. Therefore, day after day, year after year, the actor says to himself, Okay, I'll show you the real Jackie Chan. I received the script, police from Hong Kong, police from China, CIA from Hong Kong, CIA from China. Can I have a, some, like, a song of the music, La La, 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 la Land? Uh... Later, Jackie noted that the journalist didn't interpret his words quite correctly. In a statement on his Facebook page, he clarified that he didn't plan to completely abandon action films, but only wanted to risk less by performing stunts for his films. 
In 2013, with his participation, films Personal Taylor and even more gloomy Police Story 2013 were released. Despite having Police Story in the title, this movie has nothing in common with the other Jackie Chan films in the Police Story series. Here, for the first time, he played the role of a police officer in mainland China. To do this, Chan cut his hair short to match the appearance of an officer from the mainland. The film received mixed reviews from critics. Then there were When the Lights Go Out and Dragon Blade. In 2016, there were Skip Trace, Railroad Tigers, and also Jackie returned to the role of the Monkey Master in Kung Fu Panda 3. The cartoon turned out to be a successful continuation of the series. It collected a little more than half a billion dollars at the box office and guaranteed the release of three more films. In 2017, Chan appeared in Stanley Tong's film Kung Fu Yogel and the continuation of the 2005 film The Myth. He also voiced the characters of the animation projects The Nut Job 2 and Lego Ninjago Film, starred as a Vietnam War veteran in Martin Campbell's detective thriller The Foreigner and the sci-fi thriller Bleeding Steel. Judging by the reviews, the film was not successful. Various publications and critics commented that the lack of action, humor, or logic that the film is replete with laughable English dialogue and terrible acting. But an experiment was an experiment. In 2019, Jackie appeared on screen in the Russian Chinese fantasy film Vai 2 The Journey to China. By the way, the name was proposed by Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jackie Chan. The film's budget is about $50 million. In the Russian Federation and the CIS countries, the film collected only $5.6 million, and in China, the rental completely failed and the showing was discontinued. In 2020, Jackie Chan released the film Vanguard, which was filmed in Dubai and London. While filming the jet ski scene in January of 2019, Jackie almost drowned. However, critics liked this scene in the film. In 2021, Jackie's latest animated film called Wish Dragon was released. Jackie Chan's career includes more than 100 films, and for such a long journey, he has formed a vivid and very recognizable image. An image that has been diligently improved and honed from film to film. Today, we get to know Jackie for his skill at using everyday items as props in action scenes, from chairs and tables to ladders, lamps, and whatever. We fight, we fight in this area. Okay, I can use a chair. You can flip over. Yeah. Uh, you can do this, uh, you can do this yeah. with kick, right? Yeah. Then come back. Yeah. Uh, you can, you can flip, flip the chair under, you know, do yeah. all kinds of things. He likes to show the peace sign when posing for the cameras. Basically, Jackie not only does all his own stunts, but also acts like a leader, expecting the actors and actresses in his films to do their own stunts as well. He uses martial arts and hand-to-hand -hand combat in all of his action scenes. Despite being considered a martial artist, Jackie has little formal training and doesn't have a formal belt for any style. The basis for his martial arts was the Peking Opera, which uses a more theatrical interpretation of martial arts and acrobatics. The fighting style he uses during filming is a mixture of different styles, mostly using northern and traditional kung fu as a base, and then using other fighting styles and slapstick to make the scene work, which is the most humorous way. At the end of his films, he often inserts doubles with failed stunts and possible accidents. In addition to spectacular stunts and action, his films often feature scenes in which he is tortured or forced into grueling physical exertion, usually as punishment by a craftsman or teacher. Chan always plays the good guy, except for Policewoman, released in the United States as Rumble in Hong Kong in 1973. Sylvester Stallone offered him the role of Simon Phoenix in Demolition Man in 1993. He declined as he did not want to play the villain. Most often, Chan dubs his own voice for the English releases of his Asian films. He also dubs his Asian films in Chinese. As it was mentioned earlier, Jackie Chan often got injured during his own stunts. According to him, he doesn't have a single bone that he wouldn't break at least once. Jackie says he is blacklisted by all insurance firms and cannot insure health or life due to his habit of doing his own stunts and all the injuries he has accumulated over the years. By the way, Jackie is not the only one who receives bruises and injuries in his films. While filming action scenes, his own punches and kicks really hit the mark. Therefore, Chan forces his court partners to wear special pads on their legs and body to prevent serious injury.
Jackie Chan is able to speak Thai, Japanese, German, Cantonese, Chinese, English, Korean, and Spanish. Before becoming famous as Jackie, the actor used many aliases, including Pao Pao, Yan Lo, Chen Yuan Lung, Jing Lung, as well as Yan Lung Chan, Baseball Bat, Well Sun Chin, and many others. The actor was supposed to star in a film called Nosebleed, but the project was canceled after the terrorist attack on the World Trade Center on September 11, 2001. He was supposed to play a window cleaner at the World Trade Center who must stop a terrorist plot. Jackie Chan's fan club once numbered 10,000, mostly young girls. One of them committed suicide when she found out he was married. Another fan tried to commit suicide, but she was saved. In 1990, the Minister of Culture and Communications of France awarded the actor the title of Chevalier of the Order of Arts and Letters. In addition, Jackie was also awarded the Order of the British Empire and the Silver Bahinia Star, SBS. His awards include the Innovator Award from the American Choreography Awards, the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Taurus World Stunt Awards, as well as an honorary Oscar for his contribution to cinema. I still have some... Dialogue. I forget what I say, should I say. I don't know. I just, it's honored to be here. Um, it's my honor. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh. Last not least, million thanks to all my friends, fans around the world, because you, I, can, I have a reason continue to make movies, jumping the window, kicking and punching, keep breaking my bone. Thank you so much. Thank you, Oscar. Thank you. In addition, Jackie Chan became the first Chinese artist to leave his imprint at the Grauman's Chinese Theater in Hollywood and the first person in history to do so twice. For the first time, the actor did this back in 1997, but the prints were lost somewhere and the ceremony had to be repeated in 2013. Chan, who starred in more than 100 films, left prints not only on his hands and feet, but even his nose, dipping his face in cement. Jackie has an excellent, long-standing relationship with Mitsubishi Motors. The company has repeatedly donated its cars to his films. The actor is generally a big fan of motorsports. Along with driver David Chen, he owned the Chinese Jackie Chan DC racing team, which narrowly missed the lead in 24 hours of Le Mans in 2017. His favorite films include Gone with the Wind, 1939, Singing in the Rain, 1952, and The Matrix, 1999. Jackie Chan holds two Guinness World Records, which were awarded to him on December 5, 2012. He holds the records for the most credits in a single film and the most stunts performed by a live actor. The first record was set by him with Chinese Zodiac, where he played 15 major creative roles for the film, including director, producer, actor, fight choreographer, and composer. He broke the previous record of 11 roles held by Robert Rodriguez. The character Hitmon Chan from the Pokemon series is named after Chan. In addition to his film production company, JCE Movies Limited, Jackie Chan owns or co-owns several production companies. Also, being a true cinephile, Chan owns a network of cinemas, Jackie Chan Yao Lei International Cinema. As of 2015, there was already 38 cinemas in the country. Each sells merchandise under the Jackie Chan brand. The artist himself said that he would like to open them throughout the country, making Saturday tickets free for children. By the way, Jackie is a UNICEF Goodwill Ambassador. Jackie Chan has come on a long and traumatic path to world recognition and love. Films with his participation have become cult, and the actor himself has received dozens of awards, nominations, and prizes. He's loved by children and adults who were also once children and grew up on films with Jackie Chan. Jackie inspires many to be interested in cinema, to find out how films work from the inside, and what secret techniques actors have.